whirlpool ramp test commence. Yeah, I think there's something wrong with this ramp, Mike. I'm gonna have to return it. I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. What's happening, boys and girls? Back in the basement for another episode of White Water, or should I say, White Water? So, I've got my packages from Mr. Mike Wong. Shout out. Thank you. I'm going to open up the action live here on Pinball Shenanigans. I may not bust out the decals because they're so nicely wrapped in the tubes but we'll definitely be checking out the ramps and i believe i'm at a point where i can install the three ramps i think it's three ramps that go on the mini play field before you install the mini play field so that is the goal for tonight maybe install the whole play field mini play field into the main play field if if i can i mean I don't know if I need any more parts to arrive before that happens. I'm actually getting my Marco order tomorrow. So that will come with my green target. Actually, you got to install the Mantis protectors first. So I can't install those, but I will have my Opto cup, not Opto, ball cup. So I can install my, um, the mech, the up kicker mech thingamajiggy that Kevin welded for me. So I should be able to install that tomorrow. Uh, what else? I got a couple of products at the hardware store today. We'll take a look at. And also shout out to Trevor Watman of the Sweet Science of Pinball Tilt. He did a three year run with that series and it was a great series. There's still parts I have to watch still. But I was chatting with him today and um, he is a uh, retiring from that it was an awesome run you had there brother uh, i know we've supported each other in our little crazy pinball adventures so um that's uh, another chapter in the trevor whatman book and it was a cool book but uh, keep on rolling my friend oh and you coined a new term today when we were on the phone you called it what was it again shit I forget. No, I don't. It was the shenanigans pride. That's what it was. Shenanigander pride. That's what I think what it was. Nice. I like that. Might have to make t-shirts with that on it or something. Actually, on a side note, there are pinball shenanigans t-shirts in the making. I will reveal the full details of those in the near future because that is when they should be happening. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's uh, check out the action. First thing on the menu, get the home hardware action. Now, Mark from Mark's Basement Arcade recommended me a product called Weld On that's highly recommended on the pin sides for plastic repair. Now, I could order it on, on Amazon for 30 bucks plus 15 shipping, and it wasn't prime. Uh, it could have taken a long time. Or I could have tried to find another source, order it from the States. So what I did instead was just pop into the uh, hardware store locally, and I found a couple cool things. This is plastic weld, which is a putty form. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is that it is... Where does it say... Uh, the cure color is off white, so I'm not sure I'm gonna love that. But this is like 13 bucks, so I thought I'd give it a try. Now, the guy I was talking to at the hardware store said this is putty, like basically metal putty. And let's say you have a stripped screw, and then um, you take a little bit of putty, you fill the head in, you take your screwdriver bit and you push it in, you indent it, you wait. I guess an hour or five minutes set time cure time one hour and it becomes like friggin new steel and then boom you can take out your screw so multiple uses um especially for strip screws and whatever else i don't know we'll see i just bought it because also 13 bucks then we've got the jb weld clear weld so this 
is says somewhere yeah just clear so we're, I'll test this on um, old ramp or old plastics or something I'll test probably everything on old crap that I don't want to screw up and um, uh, I think it'll be good stuff to have I think this could smell very badly possibly the two-part epoxy stank up my old basement and house but yeah we'll find out and then let's move over to the goodie box all right again thank you mr wong for talking me into buying all this crap off you <laughs> just kidding i see the um decals in there i guess that's about as far as i'm gonna look at these because they're all just in there so nice. I have to unroll them all and roll them back up just, just to look at them. But he already sent me photos. And you know what they look like? They look like that. So I just set these aside for a rainy day. I don't even know if I'll ever install them or not. I might do the same thing Mike did and just hang on to them for whoever knows how long. And then... Um, yeah, they just may hang out in the basement for the next five years. Who knows? Okay, now, this is an interesting box. Let's see. Is it taped shut? Probably taped shut. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to cut it open and I'll be right back. All right. Let's take a look inside. This is a fun box. All right, here we go. Uh oh, what is this? What do I see here? Is that some broken plastic or something? Oh, that looks like old boulder plastic. I bet you that's what that is. Okay, cool. Let's check this out. Oh, yeah. Let's compare that to mine. Mine has a slightly different hue to it, aka black. So, and also. Mine has the makings of a crack. Let's see if you can see that. Right there. And this one does not have a crack. So I foresee myself using this plastic. It would be uh, much easier to clean up too. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, now the Whirlpool plastic. Oh, look at that. Even got a couple screws in there. Those tabs look to be in nice shape. Very clean. Everything looks nice. Okay, this is the part that always gets worn. Let's take a look here. Oh, yeah. That looks to be really good. I think just the way they had to form this plastic, it gets a little, like warbles in there because mine has that too but no crack in that one so that's pretty sweet we're two for two mike where's mine oh yeah over here oh i've got screws and hardware everywhere here we go yeah slight improvement but yeah so other than the crack there I think there was an indent in mine too. Maybe it's just from the molding process. Uh, I can't really see it right now. But yeah, it's right in there. It's like an indent. So I think um, that's just, I bet you all the original Whirlpool funnels there have a little bit of Wow, that's pretty crinkled. That's pretty crinkled. Holy. I'll run a ball down there a few times, but I don't see that really being a problem. Do I want to try and reinforce it with some my new plastic weld? Maybe. We'll see. But uh, I don't see any reason why I won't be using that, so that's pretty sweet. And then we've got Insanity Falls. Zoom back out here because it's a freaking four foot long ramp. Let's see if I can take off this plastic. I don't think I 
Hold on, I'll be right back. There we go, just pulled off the bag there. Okay, check this out. So, here is the ramp plastic or two. Ramp flap is a nice shape. Spit up the old tape, can remove that. But I don't think Insanity Falls really gets beat too much because the ball just kind of, maybe at this entrance. Yeah, a little bit of, let's turn this over. No, I gotta go in zoom mode to really see. Okay, here we go. I don't see any cracks there. And I think that's fine there too. So we've got a switch mounting plate here. Rivets are still good for that switch. So two screws to put that back together again. Decals are in nice shape. And everything else looks good. So let's compare to mine. See what other hardware is there or not there as well. Okay, so all I would need is this plastic here, this flasher. Is my ramp cracked at all? No? Eh, this ramp seems to hold up very well over time. So here's the switch. Here's the other piece of plastic. But yeah, I think uh, I'm going to probably be using all three of those ramps. So thanks again, Mike. Much appreciated. Shout out to Mike Wong. Oh, look at this. This is the new plastic set. Complete set. Look how nice this is. I was trying to avoid using this because if I can keep a complete set as a backup plan, I could just maybe sell this off and help pay for some of the friggin' crazy expenses of this machine. But that looks so nice compared to the one I put on there. But it'd be nice to preserve a whole set and just kind of maybe sell that off. Um, yeah, so again, my ramp is being, um, being as filthy as it is. Uh, using mics will save me some serious cleaning. Oh yeah, look at this. This wire has broken off at some point and never even on both of them never even got soldered back on okay so does it matter which wire goes where because wasn't red there I forget now it does matter I'm gonna have to figure that out now which wire goes where but I've got all the mounting hardware from the old ramp so that means this second plastic here is not for this particular ramp. I'll zoom back out here. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so this one is for it. And this one, where does that go? Ah, right here for the other ramp. Okay, so it's just a sparesy. I can go in my spare bag. All right, so that's pretty sweet. Look how clean this is. I have so very little cleaning to do. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, okay, so I guess I'm gonna stop gawking and start working. And I think my goal is to maybe install the three ramps on the mini play field, but actually I gotta do some ramp repair so I don't know is that one of the three ramps that goes on there all right I'm gonna stop uh, bumbling around I'll uh, make some progress and I'll report back when there's uh, something to show all right let's test this ramp out and see if it actually uh, works here whirlpool ramp test commence Yeah, I think there's something wrong with this ramp, Mike. I'm gonna have to return it for my money back. Oh right, you gave it to me for free. Hey, there we go.
All right, I just spent some time cleaning a couple ramps here with the magic eraser and water to start off, and then the Novus 2 and a cloth to finish. But as you can see, there is a significant before and afterage going on here. Let's see. That's just a bit of a shadow, it looks like. Almost look like ball trail that I missed, but yeah, look at that. Much improved, and then go on to the whirlpool ramp here. Look how nasty. You do not want to go down that one. Don't go down that whirlpool. You will come out filthy. Uh, so much better. Okay, that's awesome. Love how they're looking. Cleaned up the sign. Got friggin' hardware all over the place. So I think those two ramps, for sure the Whirlpool, but I think the other one also goes on the uh, upper play field. So I'm going to install them. Okay, most awkward ramp installation ever. I guess I'll just film it. Uh, where's my red magnetic Klein screwdriver thingy? Quarter inch nut driver, also known as. Okay, here we go. See if I can uh, at least get a starter screw, like so. It's just not ideal. Use some more light too, really. What is going on here? What is going on with, just listen to Pinball Profile and Stephen Bowden is the new host? I knew Teolis was taking a break of some sort, but I didn't realize Bowden was going to be the host, so that's pretty cool. I don't know if that's permanent or temporary or what, but this Ain't going well. Okay. Why did I hit the record button again? Oh yeah, because this is pinball shenanigans. It's going to be called friggin' pinball profanity very shortly. Okay. Let's just take my time. Line up the holes. I need a third hand. Okay, like so. And we're almost there. Once I get the first one in, then life will be good. But I'm telling you, life is not good right now. Okay, I'm gonna give this one more chance. And then. I'm going to uh, throw the Whirlpool ramp at the wall. That'll be fun. Fun content, won't it? Oh my gosh, this thing is gonna fall. It's gonna be disastrous. I'm clearly not doing this in an optimal manner. Okay. I probably should have not even hit the record button there because things aren't lining up. I don't think it worked. I think I'm failing miserably. I gotta take off my sweater. I'm starting to work up a sweat here. Whew, okay. So pretend you didn't see any of that, okay? And uh, I'll be back when the ramp is installed properly. Of course, as soon as I hit the stop button, everything goes smoothly. That's how things work on pinball shenanigans. Now that I hit the record button, things are bound to get worse. But it should be lining up now. Right? 
Wake the butt. Don't you give me any more troubles. This is also a balancing act. I gotta be... Whoa. Just as I said that, it tried to shift on me. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I had to document this because this is kind of like a big moment for big butt. It's your big day, buddy. Your first ramp is back on. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll move on to the next one. Okay. Check this out. Here is the freshly cleaned ramp. If you notice the hole on the left does not line up to anything. See that? So I either have to dremel out the ramp a little bit or drill a new hole in the wood. I like the dremeling the ramp. Here's the old crappy ramp. Ooh, that fits so much more comfortable. Just the way that the con it contours to the wood even seems nice. Nicer. Let's see. Let's try to check out the contour again. Yeah, it's still good. Hmm. All right, I'm at a crossroads. I have to decide if I want to stick to the old ramp just because it seems to fit a little happier or make the new one fit. We'll see. I'll be back. All right, so I'm going to make the nice clean ramp fit. So what I've done so far is added a toothpick and glue into that ramp screw hole. It's not fully tight yet as you can see. And this hole I'm going to drill into the wood and make a new hole. It's going to be right close to the edge. I'm not loving the idea. Maybe I should fill up that hole first. That's what I'm going to do. I'll fill up that hole with a toothpick and glue. And then I'll drill a new little hole. All right, good news and bad news. Good news is uh, I filled both holes with toothpicks. I drilled a new hole over here in wood glue, um, toothpicks and wood glue. That screw went in nice and solid. Uh, I did that one. I kind of pulled it out and refilled it, made sure it was nice and tight. But when I was tightening this one, I heard the infamous crack. See that little tiny crack on the edge there. So I'm not thrilled about that, but I wanted to make sure it was nice and flush. So then when I was doing this one, I got a little gun shy. It's not quite as flush. It actually sticks out a bit, but the ball will never touch that area, right? It's going to roll down your flipper. So it's okay if it sticks out just a smidge, but I think originally I was actually missing this screw. One or, or both, probably one only, but yeah, for sure I was missing one, but now both are in there. Both are in there good. And we managed to fit the, uh, the new plastic on, not the old one. So I'm happy about that. And uh, now I gotta go look at the third plastic, which I believe goes there, but that one might need repair first. So we'll see what happens next. And so after all that, looks like I didn't need to install that ramp in advance. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. All right, let's see if we can uh, create some more shenanigans here. I'm going to attempt to do a little JB weld on this ramp with no prior experience. Just want to kind of beef this up just a little bit. No idea how this is going to turn out. Never done anything like it before. The instructions say remove the cap. Okay. Squeeze equal parts onto a disposable surface. Ooh, can smell that already. Ooh, wow, that is a lot of... Oops, more than I need, that is for sure. 
Okay, so I better clean that up somehow. What do I got? I need to, oh, I got it. Hold on. I don't know what I got. I thought I had a used rag. Hold on. Yeah. Before that sets, let's clean that up. The next instruction should say, put cap right back on. Okay, that seems reasonable enough. Let's stir this up before it friggin sets. Good thing I didn't get the one minute, man. That would be too tricky to work with. Okay. It's feeling really thick. All right, so stir. Mix after removing press cap down a punch, squeeze equal amounts under the sort of mix thoroughly, apply with the appropriate tool and even coat. Okay. It kind of does feel like Plastic, like melted plastic. Did I get some on my knuckle? My knuckle's feeling sticky. All right, well, here goes nothing. This is, probably should have practiced this on a, uh, on a crappy ramp first, eh? But, tis the shenanigander way, I guess. Here we go. By the way, Mark, this is all your fault. Mark's Basement Arcade. You led me down this path. <laughs> I think it'll be a good one though. Okay, I can see if this doesn't dry clear like it says it does. That could look kind of crappy, but you know what? Come to think of it, this is gonna be well hidden behind the uh, Mantis protector and all that. So what I'm going to do now is kind of like pull that crack open just a smidge. Just try and work it in there. Well, it's not working anything in anywhere. Here. So add a little bit right here. Kind of spreading that apart. There we go. There, now let it settle back together again. Don't want to get too much gunk on the inside, but look at that. I think that's going to look like crap. Should have practiced on a crappy ramp first. But what I do think is that that's going to dry friggin' solid as a friggin' rock. This says it dries like somewhere. Where does it say? 3900 PSI strength once it's all dried up. So with that does gonna look like crap but i think because of where it is you won't really see it actually i think it's ramp protector probably no it's this one here no that's not going to quite cover it but again it's going to be in a spot where you can't really see it so for a used crappy old ramp oh it's starting to like ooze I better make sure that stays flat. So I'm gonna let this, ah, don't get any trails anywhere. I wonder how easy this wipes up if you get the in a bad spot. Oh, not bad. If you spill it, okay. So, I guess I gotta find a way to just kinda sit this so it doesn't like ooze downwards. But it's supposed to set in five minutes, so, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so, I think this stuff said it sets in five minutes, right? Yeah, five minutes. But it's still a little bit of a consistency that, if I don't position it just right, it will start kind of drooping and dripping sort of dripping down that way and down that way. So I've got it just resting in a spot that I'm happy with now. So that should be friggin' good. 
in a bit. I added a little bit to this side, but even that's starting to almost droop a little bit. But I think you can sand it if needed. I think I read you can sand it after a little bit of time. So I'm going to just let this cure. Probably not going to really be able to touch it. Is it one hour? Cures in one hour. Okay, well, maybe I can get back to that tonight. Because I would like to install that ramp. But I think in the meanwhile, let that do its thing. What I'll do then is move on to this ramp here. This is going to be a doozy. I need to repair this damage here. Um, I have to figure out how to fix this. Not sure yet, but I believe that someone added this bracket, I'm almost certain, because when I looked on uh, the interwebs, there was no bracket here. So this might not actually be a horrible solution. Uh, the pop can tabs and the wing nuts and all that, maybe not the greatest solutions. So I'll have to figure that out and make that work. So I guess I'll start by cleaning this bad boy. Okay, just starting to disassemble and clean the ramp. I've cleaned the uh, top plastic there. And I noticed the solder on this switch is a very sketchy. So I will solder this up, remove the switch from the ramp, and then I can submerge the whole thing and uh, really clean it up. All right, that switch is in better shape now. Cleaned it up a bit, soldered it, and the ramp is looking a lot better. Yeah. All right, so the next thing is to sort out this area and then uh, put everything back together. So wish me luck. Just cleaning up this switch bracket and its butt end has been uh, mashed in pretty good. Look at that. So... I guess that goes like this and you enter the ramp there and the ball flies up and hits the butt end there. That's what this is supposed to prevent. So not sure if that's just a common thing. Check your butt end on this switch bracket and let me know if yours is mushed in too. But uh, yeah, it might just be a whitewater thing. Anyway. Just thought that was noteworthy. I don't know. Solder seems okay on this ish. I did plug it in and test it. Seems fine. So, yeah. All right. Moving on. All right. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I cut a piece of Lexan to the shape of the ramp, drilled a couple holes, screws and nuts to hold it in place. I mean, all it really has to do is hold one end of the switch bracket and then may kind of like build up the area here with a thicker piece to get it to the right height, possibly. We'll see. Something like that. But it's a lot of finagling, that's for sure. Part of the reason I didn't buy the new ramps is because I knew there would be lots of finagling, but... There may just be as much with the old ramps, except I'm saving $1,200. Alright, some serious shenanigans going on here. As you can see, the switch bracket is installed, but not without a lot of effery. Um, I had to bust out my tap kit because the hole that I wanted to mount the bracket to was not tapped. This one was, this one wasn't. So. I had to make sure that I adjusted the switch at a good height and a good angle, you know, this way, you know, there's a lot of different adjustments that you could put it on and it not work properly. So I had to carefully figure out what I think is going to work. So I just used that old bracket there and 
I found that two washers in between kind of gave it the height that I thought it liked. You see the two washers there in between? And then, for the other side, I actually found a spacer that bridged that gap perfectly. I had some drilling and some dremeling to get everything to line up perfectly. But that's what it looks like right now, okay? So, as long as it works consistently and it doesn't break apart in 100 games, then I am totally okay with that. I just don't know how well it's going to hold up. But, if you put the ball in there, I've got it so that the ball is pretty, like that switch is pretty centered on the ball. And listen, you can hear it clicking. So, I think, uh oh, I lost my balls. Anyway, uh, on the bench, I think it's going to work. In the game, that's a whole different story because with the flipper strength, it's going to be launching that ball around and I may be just mushing the back end um, and might have to change the angle of things. But that's just going to be the, uh, I'll have to just put everything together and figure it out the hard way. Hopefully that works though. And with that being done, I can install that. I can install that. And then maybe I will actually install this ramp to the mini play field and then uh, probably wrap it up at that point. Uh, it took a little bit of time to mess with all this crap. Let's go check on our other ramp here, actually. Okay. It's not looking too bad. Let's uh, zoom in here so we can see better. Yeah, well. Actually, it's probably been an hour. This is potentially cured. Doesn't look quite as bad as I thought it might. You can certainly see it, but yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, I think before I install that ramp though, uh, I might wanna beef up this area here with some Lexan or something. So that one might not go on, but uh, I'm going to put the other ramp together. I'll be back. All right, here we go. It's time to put on this big ramp. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a big step in the, the whole process here. Let's give it a heck. Okay, got my hardware ready. I think one of these screws goes here. Let's see. It wasn't with my original pile of hardware. No, that's not, no, that's not the right screw. Okay. But I can put in these guys at least. But, look at that. At least if that switch uh, doesn't work properly, it's a pretty accessible switch. So, I should be able to uh, fix it if I do have any issues. Ooh, actually, ooh, it's not accessible at all because I need to reach under there to get at those nuts. So, yeah, it is accessible, but it would be quite the challenge. So please work, just please work. Okay, so I'll just kind of semi dry fit on these ramp screws. I find my screw for that. Let me see, where is that? That's at the. Is that any chance the boulders mount to that? Oh, and then there's these two as well. 
do those as well. I'm pretty sure I was missing one of those screws too. So I bet if I just use the same stuff here, there, then that'll be, uh, that'll be happy. Okay, so there it is. Just sort of dry fit right now. I didn't crank on anything. What I want to do is find hardware for here and here and here kind of get everything all semi-tightened and then once I'm happy with that fitment then I will tighten everything up but yeah that worked out okay like having this installed I don't think uh, that's going to be a problem possibly easier to deal with that actually out of the machine so I hope I don't have to remove that for whatever reason but it should be okay but it's amazing how this whole I gotta add one more ramp and then install it all in one piece. It's just kind of crazy how that is designed and, and how they even came up with the assembly procedure for that. It's amazing. But making some uh, good progress. i probably going to get held up waiting for parts, but I can still do the last ramp onto this and then maybe uh, assemble this. That'll be in the next one, of course. Oh, and don't forget, i got to make sure I get that I should probably just loosely put that in there yes that right there perfect that can stay there there we go and then that's where somebody used some honking ass wood screw to secure that down like this like this and I think this was on the other side I don't know what was originally in there, but I'll make it happy. So yeah, wire form is set in place. Now I can really get everything going. All right, so there it is. That's the progress for the night. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully next episode will be uh, installation of this mini play field. See you on the next one.